We're going to create a linear regression, quadratic, and cubic, and also show how to do more general regression as well with uh, polynomial fits. We have the data points that are shown here in the, with the black circles, and we're going to try to minimize the sum of squared errors that helps us approximate uh, or fit the coefficients of the polynomial or linear regression to uh, minimize the sum of squared errors between the points and the regression. So let's jump into it. We need a couple packages that we're going to start with, the NumPy matplotlib. And then we have our data points here that we're going to use for the regression. And we've just included a plot of just the data. So let's go ahead and first of all, uh, we're going to do this in Gecko. There's other ways to do this in NumPy as well. But for this tutorial, we'll just show the Gecko. Um, we we'll go ahead and create a new model uh, for Gecko, and then we'll have options. We'll use I mode equals two. That allows us to get multiple steady state data points. And we're gonna need that for a regression. We're gonna have our coefficient C, and I'm gonna go ahead and create multiple parameters. Uh, I'll just say they're equal to zero initially for I in range four. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to cubic a polynomial and need four uh, parameters for that. And then we'll just kind of reuse those as we do the linear uh, on up. Okay, and then the next thing we'll need is X. That's gonna be our, these are our measured values. And I'll create a new parameter with value equals XM. And then our Y, which is gonna be the calculated output. I'll make that a controlled variable, that's gonna be the one that we're going to try to match between the model and the measured value. And that will be equal to YM. A couple options that we'll need. Uh, we'll need to turn on F status. That's the feedback status for Y, meaning that we're going to use the measurements. And then we're going to have our equation as well. And so Y is going to be equal to C naught, okay, plus C1. Uh, times x plus c2 times x squared plus c3 uh, uh, times x, uh, x cubed. Okay, and so we have this correlation. I'll go ahead and write it here. I just have c0 plus c1 times x plus c2 times x squared plus c3 times x cubed. And so if we're gonna do a linear regression, we'll just include those first two terms. If we do a quadratic, we'll include the three terms and a cubic is gonna be all four of those unknown parameters that we're gonna be able to adjust. So let's start with the just the linear correlation first. And so what I'm gonna do for that one is turn the status on. That means uh, we let the optimizer use that to minimize the the error between the two okay and i'll do that for c0 and c1 initially then we'll solve it and i'll say display equals false and then we'll get our parameter values okay so p1 is just going to be equal to c1 dot value comma c0 dot value okay there are regress parameters for our linear correlation let's just go ahead and print p1 okay so it looks like i have geckos not defined uh, don't forget to do import the package from gecko import gecko and let me try that one more time it'll just import the package and then run it and there you can see uh, some of the parameters. Uh, those are just the values at, okay, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and say value zero, just get the first ones from that list. Okay, run it one more time. There's our linear regression, and then it'll pop up with that uh, plot and show us the uh, parameter values. Okay, so I have my intercept, which is, approximately equal to zero and then my slope which is equal to 0.2. So 
So there's my linear regression. And then I can include, for example, I can I can include this into the uh, as a plot with those parameters. I can plot x. Uh, I'll do I'll do this. I'll create some additional points here just for the plotting, so we can see how this thing fits, not just at the at the measured values. So I'll do lin space, and I'll go between zero and five, and put a hundred points in there. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and put in XP, and then I'll do NP polyval. So this will just give us our polynomial uh, approximation here with values at XP, and then we'll make that into a let's see a blue dashed line. Okay, give it a label. We'll say that's linear. <clears throat> Okay, now this is going to run again, and then we'll have our linear regression there. Okay, and then let's do the next one. This is actually a sum of uh, absolute errors right now. So if we want to change it to sum of squared errors, we're just going to have to change <clears throat> an option. Uh, and then I th it is EV type. We'll set that to sum of squared errors. And so that's going to change the regression just a little bit. Okay, you can see that it's going to come up just a little bit more. It changes the slope and the intercept. But uh, if you think that that one <clears throat> here in the upper right, if that might be an outlier, so uh, some of absolute errors is less sensitive to outliers than the sum of squared errors. And so if we do that again, you can see that it um, you know favors the consensus of the other points versus that point that is uh, up there near two. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do now is make this just a little bit smaller so we can see a little more text. And then we want to turn on uh, status for two. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and solve it again. And then we'll get the parameters. And I'll just say that's P2. We'll just get our next parameter there. We're just going to uh, optimize one more. And that's going to be equal to C2. Okay, and let's do the same thing that we did down here. Now this is going to be uh, quadratic instead of the polynomial. And we'll just make this one a red dashed line and put P2 there instead. Okay, so now it's going to run these two different optimizations and come up with the two different parameters. Again, this is sum of absolute error versus sum of squared error. And then when it uh, finishes, we should have something. Uh, there's our quadratic approximation. <coughs> okay. Um, and if you want to see the coefficients, you can do that here. And then we'll also do it for the cubic as well. So we'll just do one more here. We'll turn on C3. So normally those are equal to zero, but then when we let the optimizer uh, optimize those, we'll just add one more parameter here to be able to retrieve. Here's our cubic. And I'll do P3 there instead of P2. And let's go ahead and make this one a green dashed line, and that's going to be a cubic approximation. Okay, so those will run the three different regressions, and then we'll print all of the parameter values and be able to see uh, what it comes up with, hopefully be able to have the plot that we see there on the right. Okay, so um, regression, you know, it's, it's valuable for you know, fitting a single polynomial to data. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the different parameters there. You can see our different coefficients of the linear and then polynomial fits. Uh, you know, this also highlights how to do, you know, just general regression. You can really put any type of equation here that you like, linear or nonlinear, with any number of parameters and then be able to optimize those. So linear and polynomial are just special cases of the one of uh, the more general case, which you, where you can do nonlinear regression. 
Okay, the next example that we're going to be going over, in fact, is going to be nonlinear regression. So um, stay tuned for that one. If you'd like to get the source code for this, you can come to this page right here. Just navigate to it under documentation. Let me show you where that is. Okay, documentation. And then here on the right, you'll just go to Gecko Python. And you'll be able to see this one. The one that we just covered was under linear and polynomial regression, and it has the source code right there.